these are series of revision videos for your quick revision and I'm encouraging that you should listen to these videos and maybe to a speed or maybe use it like a podcast so that you have done the courses already. You don't need to redo the entire course but just listening at the terms you'll be able to revise it. So this particular video is on understanding the slope theories and I'm discussing slope replacement model which is given by Pink. So when you write about Peng's theory, you must be sure about four or five facts. Number one, pitch Peng's model as an alternative to Davisian model. The Davisian model had three important elements. One is it was a time-based model. It ignored the role of upliftment. It talked only about erosion. A third is uh, Davis talked about uh, unidirectional changes, does not talk about the role of upliftment, how things may not be as sequential as he had thought. And the fourth is uh, Davis talked about conditions of North America alone. He did not talk about the other type of uh, conditions in climate where there might be glacial impact, where there may be impact related to winds or semi-arid conditions. Now, starting from here, you start off towards Pink's model and say that Pink's model is far more comprehensive. In fact, to start with, Pink's model talks about that the landforms and the slopes are the consequence of interactions between endogenic and exogenic processes and uh, how Peng was more inclusive in terms of talking about the role of upliftment, he's more inclusive in talking about the role of uh, different agents of uh, erosion where he talks about the role of climate. In fact, the approach of uh, Peng is called as climatic geomorphology because he did not talk about any one specific type of climate like Davis had talked about. In fact, Davis dismissed all other types of climate as climatic accidents. And the next point is, Pinks also talks about the role of uh, structure, the role of uh, rock hardness, uh, you know, properties of addition, cohesion, he talks about role of slopes. So this much of content you must write whenever you start with the Pinks model. Then you talk about what did Peng tell us about slope replacement model. Okay, so you start the slope replacement with the definition that slope replacement is a model where steeper slopes are replaced by gentle slopes and the replacement is from below. One. Number two, the gentle slopes grow at the cost of the steeper slopes. So if you remember the diagrams we all use, you show the slope changes happening from the base. From the base, the steeper slope is replaced by a gentle slope and the gentle slope becomes much, much longer. And you write this much, you must quickly contrast this with Davis model. Davis model talks about slope changes happen from top, not from below. For Davis model, slopes evolve and they become gentle e slowly. In case of Pink's model, slopes don't evolve. Slopes change, keeping in mind how the gentle slope is stretching and enlarging into the steeper slopes. Having said this, you please draw the diagram the way we draw the diagram of different segments and show how the slopes are changing. That's one. The second part of slope replacement we must talk about is that what does Peng tell us about the different type of slopes and the reasons for the slopes. For Davis, the convex slope is a consequence of youthful stage. The concave slope is a consequence of senile stage. And the straight slopes are related to the a stage of maturity. Pink, however, says the convex slopes are features of growing slopes or growing stage, which is your waxing stage. When the landform is uplifting rapidly, the landform is uplifting acceleratingly, convex slopes are formed. Whereas concave slopes are features of the vanning phase of the landform development. In vanning phase, the landform is gradually reducing its absolute and relative height. And whereas straight slopes are features of the phase of constant growth. Uh, we gleam morphige and winkelung, which is the phase of the constant growth. That's how Peng explains. And the third important aspect is, tell us about what Peng thinks about the role of rivers. For Davis, river is an agent of erosion. River cuts, river erodes. For Pink, river is an agent of removal of sediments. He talks about the, the process of basal sapping, how from the base of a slope, the river is removing sediments. 
So if you have this much of content, your 10 mark or 15 mark answer is done. What is slope replacement? What are the three, four aspects of slope replacement? And make sure you write about slope replacement in the context of Davis model. Always compare contrast and end the answer always in equilibrium theories. So in the same series of revisions, I've discussed something on equilibrium model. So what is the idea of uh, JT Hack or idea of uh, Gilbert or the idea of Stoller and what they tell us about how slopes are forming. In fact, Peng's model is one of the variants of equilibrium model. Unlike uh, Davis who talks about uh, slopes are always progressive and they continuously decline and become gentle. Peng says no, slopes are one type of balance, the consequence of endogenic and exogenic processes. So a typical answer on slope replacement must start with, okay, uh, what are the flaws of Davis model? Then tell us the postulates of Peng's model. Then tell us the three, four aspects of Peng and how it is different from Davis model. And the answer in the equilibrium ideas of slope, which are modern theories and how Peng is also a variant of an equilibrium model.